Um, thank you for uh, being with us. Um, and rather than think about the weather outside, I'd like you just to, to imagine for a moment you're a bank manager and you've got a new customer who is like a tech customer, growing fast, being successful with a product that people seem to want. Millions of pounds come in and out of this bank account. And then the competition responds, things go a bit quieter. Then imagine a pandemic comes along, so things for everybody is a lot quieter. But you know that this new customer of yours has big plans. And as the pandemic subsides, you know the customer is going to emerge and they want to have 500 candidates at this huge event called a general election in a couple of years' time. You know, as the bank manager, that millions of pounds will continue to come in and out of the account in order to pay bills to stand those candidates. And surely, as a bank manager, that's the, the, and a bank that claims to promote customer service, that's what you want. So, of course, the bank is Metro Bank, and the customer is Reform UK. And we've got big plans. And the bank should be reassured, after all, we're regulated and monitored and supervised by the Electoral Commission to ensure that we are squeaky clean. The bank knows that its leader is a successful entrepreneur who knows how to get things done, who may even introduce new banking uh, contacts, potential new customers. So does it seem odd to you? Why would you, as a bank, why would you terminate that banking relationship when you know the potential that's coming down the road? Does that seem odd to you? Does that seem inexplicable? So I say, is it a coincidence that Reform UK is the only political party that is challenging this government to give all our freedoms back after the pandemic? The only political party that is challenging this government on its authoritarian plan to have vaccine passports. The only political party that is challenging this government on its plans to vaccinate children. And the government knows, of course, that we plan to stand 500 plus candidates. We will be the only political party at the next general election, and bearing in mind there will only be five parties with 500 plus candidates, we're the only party that will stand on a platform of cutting taxes for the least well off, the smaller businesses and the self-employed. The only party that will stand against this government's mad plan to ban all our, boiler, all our boilers. Maybe I should take it as a compliment that someone somewhere is worried, but it does seem pretty extraordinary that given this, these circumstances, that the bank should decide to terminate our relationship with just 60 days' notice. And I just thought it'd be helpful to put in context how unusual this is, how unprecedented this is. I've been in business for over 30 years. I've operated across 12 countries, four continents. I've been a director of over 100 companies, hundreds of bank accounts, dozens of bank loans, dozens of banks. And in 30 plus years, never once, not one single occasion has any of these banks in any of these countries ever said, please can we close your bank accounts? Please can we terminate your banking relationship? Let me be very clear, this is not in the ordinary course of business. This is not because they considered that it was not commercially viable. This is extraordinary. This is unprecedented, and it is without question, in my mind, the result of political pressure. Someone, somewhere, somehow, has applied pressure. There is no other explanation that I can think of. Now, I'm an optimist. The glass is always half full. It's never half empty. And therefore, I hope that over the next couple of days, some nice bank manager, sitting in a traditional banking branch somewhere in our wonderful United Kingdom, possibly in the regions, will give us a ring and say they'll be delighted to offer us clearing bank facilities. That's the optimist in me. The pragmatist in me says that we need to have a plan B, 
and a Plan C. We all enjoy living in this incredible democracy of ours. But in order for democracy not just to survive, but to thrive and flourish, we need new ideas. We need challenger political parties, new people coming into politics that want to challenge, to shape, to influence, to push and probe the mainstream parties with new ideas, because that's how, as a nation, we will continue to grow and get better and better and to run our country more efficiently. So we need these challenger parties. But if we can't have clearing bank facilities, we can't pay bills, and therefore we can't stand candidates at the next general election. And I repeat, our clear plan to have over 500 candidates at the next general election. We've already got some 200. Indeed, we've got training days over the coming weeks of the first 200 candidates. So people should be under no illusion about our ambition. So therefore, in terms of looking at a plan B and C, we need to have clearing bank facilities. And whilst I hope the phone will ring, I'm also going to take the unprecedented step today. I'm going to write to the Governor of the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, to ask that the Bank of England itself provide clearing bank facilities for political parties who are unable to secure clearing bank facilities with any of the mainstream banks. For whatever reason, they've decided not to provide them, because we need that in order for democracy to continue to thrive and flourish in our country. Surely we all want that. We like to believe that we live in the mother of all democracies. But if new political parties can't thrive and can't grow, then it feels a bit like, to me, like we're living in the shadow of the godfather of an autocracy. And surely that is not where we want to be.